Okay, good evening everybody. Okay, welcome to the third segment of light. Okay, in this segment we will talk about total internal reflection. Okay, total internal reflection actually is an extension of refraction. Okay, what actually happens? Okay, before before I go through total internal reflection, okay, I need to bring everyone through the journey of refraction. Okay, what actually happens in refraction and what is the final possible outcome that we are looking at? Okay, now at the refraction, okay, I mentioned there are possible outcome. There are possible. There are, there are three possible outcomes that we we are looking at. Okay, one we have the bending away from the normal and bending towards the normal, and there's a third case okay, whereby you have actually zero change in direction. Okay, is whereby the light ray actually have what we know enter the object enter the medium head on okay for example in this case if i have ray box shooting out the ray it enter the medium for example this is air and this is glass okay after it exit from the glass block okay so now what happens is you'll find that the glass block will enter the light ray will enter, eh, the light ray will enter the glass block from air to glass without any change in direction Okay, because at this junction here, angle I is actually zero. This is what I mean by head on. So he will just go in straight in, straight out. Okay. So while it's in the glass block, you will actually travel straight and you will hit the other end of the glass block here. Okay, so this is what we this is what I normally call the third case of refraction. Okay. That you will go in straight through. It's a very I would say it's a very rare case that we have. Okay, but nonetheless it's one of the possible outcomes. Okay, now what happens is now what happens is if I change the angle, okay, the position of the ray box, okay, I shift it to the left, okay, I shift it to the left here. So what I'm actually doing is actually I'm I am actually increasing the incident angle, okay, I'm actually increasing the incident angle. So what I'm doing is I'm actually increasing angle I from zero, okay, onwards, okay. So from a straight on entering, I will actually shift it to the left. And you find that when I shift left, okay, my angle I is increasing, you'll find that I actually have what we call refraction happening. My light ray actually starts to bend. Okay. Now because I'm actually and exiting from where or entering a new medium, I actually from glass to air. Glass to air. So across these two mediums is glass to air is what we call dense medium to less dense medium. Okay, based on the last video, you find that if I have dense to less dense, I will actually bend away from the normal. Okay, so what we actually have is now we have the observation of refraction. So what we are going to do now is I'm actually going to keep increasing the angle I. I'm going to shift the ray box further and further to the left. Okay, so as my I, my ray box move to the left, you'll find that my angle I will keep increasing. And likewise, okay, my angle R, okay, or my refracted ray will be bending away from the normal more and more and more. So what we have here is if I keep changing the angle, if I keep changing, example, angle I, if I keep increasing, you'll find that my refracted ray, okay, bends more. Okay, what is more, you bend away more. Okay, meaning my angle R will actually increase. Okay, so I will have a series of refraction actually occurring. The positive outcome will be from dense to less dense medium, you bend away from the normal. Okay, so now what happened is this. What happened is if I bend all the way, you'll find as my R will keep increasing, there will be a case, okay, whereby at this particular I, okay, at this particular I, Okay, at a certain degree, I will actually have a R refracted angle. Okay, that is 90 degree. Okay, I will have, I will arrive at this particular location. Okay, so at 90 degree, what's so special about this is that angle R. 90 degrees, I do not need actually, I do not actually need a tool to measure it. 90 degrees, like right angles, I can actually see it straight away. Okay, at 90 degrees. And this is angle, and 
at this phenomenon, I actually term my angle I. Okay, I actually give it a name. I call it critical angle. Now, why do I give it a name like critical angle? Okay, it's because of what's going to happen later on. Okay, so now at this particular situation, at my angle I here, at this particular angle I, the refracted ray will be 90 degrees. So what I'm going to do is now is I'm going to continue to increase angle I. So I increase angle I now. Okay, I increase a bit only. Or I can keep increasing. Okay, but you'll find that previously my angle I actually arise when I am when I when I'm at this particular angle I, my refracted angle is 90 degree. So now what happens if I increase? Okay, the same outcome will continue. If I increase my I, my angle R, my, my refracted ray will continue to bend away from normal. But what's so special about this is that at this junction now, my ray will bend. Okay, but now the refractor ray doesn't exist in the new mean in the second medium. It doesn't exist in air now. Now it bend and it drop back to the glass medium. Okay, back to glass. Okay, so what we have now at this particular situation is that you find that I still have incident ray, which is here. I still have my refracted ray here, but just that like, it's no longer refraction ready because you find that my direction of travel in my light ray is all within glass. Okay, remember at the beginning of my second video, refraction occur where occur when it passes when light transit through different medium. But now what happens is at this particular case, my light ray actually transit across a single medium, and for this case it will be glass. So when it transit in a single medium. Refraction actually doesn't exist anymore. It doesn't occur already because it's only at a single medium. Okay, so this is what happened here. Okay, and this is why the case three here is important. Because at case three, at this particular angle whereby my refracted ray is 90 degree, this particular angle of incident, incident angle, this particular angle of incident is actually what I call the last refracted or last incident angle that causes refraction or what we call the last refraction case because after this angle i okay, if i increase i further my light ray will transit in a single medium and at this junction now refraction doesn't occur anymore so that's why at my angle at my case 3 this particular angle i is important it's critical it's critical because it highlights the last case of refraction. So that's why we actually term the angle of incident at this case. Uh, we give it a special name. We call it critical angle. So in a nutshell, critical angle is critical because this is the last angle of incidence that give rise to a last, the last refracted angle. Okay. So the refracted angle in this case we are talking about is 90 degree. Okay, so this is the last refraction case that we are talking about. That's why we classified the angle of incident as critical angle. Okay, because after this, you will go down to case 4. Okay, you will find that refraction no longer exists. And what become now is that this changes of direction of light it actually mimics what we call reflection very closely. Okay, because at this junction now, you will find that my angle i actually equal to angle r in this particular case it is actually almost the same as a mirror as a reflection case but the only difference here that we, 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 we that is different from reflection is there's a lack of mirror okay so there's no mirror here so we can't actually call it a reflection but yet the outcome actually mirror very closely to a reflection so that's why we gave it a name we call it total internal reflection internal to highlight that the path of the light ray actually occur inside that medium or inside a medium okay so that's what we call total internal reflection so in a nutshell uh, across these four cases you'll find that we start off with refraction okay and we end up with the last scenario the last case of refraction okay and that last case that angle, angle of incident i call it critical angle and after that after this last case you'll find that refraction actually will break down and actually convert back to reflection.
or what I call total internal reflection. Okay, now this is what happens to the story of refraction. Okay, at a particular instance whereby you find that my light ray angle R increase, my light ray, my refracted light actually keep bent away, it kept getting bigger and bigger and eventually hits 90 degree and I will have an angle R that's more that I term it as critical angle. And beyond critical angle, I will have internal reflection. Okay, so it gives us some I will, I will not say a wake up call, but it just it, it gave us one of the uh, new perspective is whereby if you have a scenario of refraction, okay, what scenario we are looking at is whereby the light actually travel from denser medium to less dense. Okay, in the previous case, I'm looking at glass to air. So if I have a particular case of dense to less dense, my light ray will keep bending away from the normal. Refractor ray will bend away from normal, but there will be a point whereby my refracted ray here will be angle 90 degree. Okay, so my angle R will be 90 degree. So at this particular case here, the angle I that I'm looking out for, the angle of incidence I'm looking out for, I actually class it as critical angle. Okay, so critical angle or the condition whereby your internal reflection occur. Okay, for us or for to for us to, to realize internal reflection has occurred, the situation or the scenario of the light ray must actually hit critical angle first. Okay, so that's why when we talk about uh, critical angle, okay, it's important because it tells us the next scenario, the next angle, total internal reflection will occur already. Okay, so this is what we have when we talk about critical angle, and this also highlights the condition for total internal reflection to occur. Okay, whereby it must be dense to less dense and the angle of incident must be greater than critical angle. Which means the angle R is actually more than 90 now. Okay, so in this case we don't call it critical R angle R refracted angle because refracted refraction has actually break down. Okay. Now this is the thing, okay? So critical angle what we are looking out for is this, okay? So it bring us back one big round again. So it bring us back to critical angle. So same thing, critical angle. Like what is defined here is where by angle I is actually at a certain angle that allows refracted angle to be ninety degree. Okay, and this is what we call, and this is why we define critical is the last case of refraction. Okay, so if you look at it, if you look at it, that the the outcome for total internal reflection is actually quite straightforward. Okay, whereby dense to less dense medium, that's the first condition. My angle of incident must be greater than critical angle. Okay, so if you look at it, is even more important for us to realize how to calculate critical angle. Because if we know the critical angle, we actually will be able to pinpoint when reflection, total internal reflection, actually occur. Okay, so now same thing. It, since it's still a refraction, okay, in critical angle, I still can use Snell's law. I can still can use this formula okay, to find to 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 deal with uh refracted uh refraction. Okay, for critical angle, remember when we mention critical angle, one of the hidden clue that's given to us is that the refracted ray is automatic ninety degree. This is the last case already. So refracted critical angle tell us that angle R. The outcome of angle R is 90 degree. So when I have angle C, okay, it means this is actually my critic my angle I. So what does angle C tell us? It tells us that angle R is actually 90 degree. This is the clue that is hidden to us that some students are some students will actually forgot about it. So if you look at the formula at the less dense medium, this is your less dense medium, this is your dense medium. Okay, so if you look at the the, the, the outcome you will sine 90, okay, which the angle there, ratio to sine C will be sine 1, so you will be able to calculate the critical angle using the ratio. Okay, but this formula is not a new formula, it just comes from Snell's law. Okay, it's just that I know R is 90 degree. Okay, application of total internal reflection nowadays is quite common, it's like optical fibers, okay, whereby it keep bouncing away. Okay, the light keep bounce away, we apply total internal reflection to it. Okay. The other application I'll leave it I'll, I'll leave leave you to read up. Okay, so just take note of what we have gone through, the condition for critical angle and what we are dealing with.